Oh, that's okay. You need to sign for something. Not you, Tim. FedEx is here. <laughs> we're live, Tim. <laughs> we're live? <laughs> oh, yeah, hi. We're live. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> How are well, you, Tom? Welcome, everyone. I'm good. How are you doing, Tim? Good, good, good. Join summer, early summer. Yep, the weather's been beautiful here in, in Vermont. I'm going to Cape Cod tomorrow for t a week. Yeah. And uh, I already had some good striper fishing, and I had some good carp fishing the other day, and I've had some decent trout fishing. So it's been a good Whoa. year so far. Yeah. I hear you. And hopefully we'll keep, keep some water here in the streams anyway, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. Um, with any luck. Yeah, it's getting dry. It's getting dry in Vermont too. It's yeah. we're okay now, but we I, I think we're supposed to get rain this week, which is good. Yeah, that's we're rain. we're really hoping for a. But we, we do have honestly the stream gauges are all reading more than uh, more than average, so pretty pretty happy about that so far. Yeah, but I could be yeah a... I, I know June. It usually we get to mid June and it just tanks. We don't see rain for a week and two weeks at a time. Yeah. It's the way summers have been going. Anyway, sorry, FedEx is here and the dog's going to bark for a couple minutes. I have no control over that. Um, <laughs> we're going to tie a fly called a flat wing today. And I know, Tim, you have you have actually done videos on this before. Yeah. So yeah. you got a leg up on me. Um, but... Uh, well, I, actually, I coming clean. I wasn't tying in the videos, Tom. It was uh, my buddy uh, Joe Cordero who was actually doing the oh. tying. Uh, yeah, oh. and uh, kind of a flat wing master, if you will, from Massachusetts, and uh, super nice guy. And and uh, so uh, my my technique is his technique. I, I it's kind of the traditional way to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he learned from uh, Ken Abram Ken Abrams directly. So. Mm -hmm. kind of the real flat wing legend yeah so to give you give everyone a history of the flat wing it's a, it's it's a streamer but the fl the feather is tied flat this way and in instead of this way they're tied this way and uh it's actually an old technique the the old nine three uh, uh landlocked salmon brook trout streamer uh if you tied that properly you tied i i think it was Two of the feathers were flat, and two of the feathers were placed on top of them, Tim, uh, in the uh, yeah, normal I'm position. Sure. I, I'm not sure about that one, Tom. Um, yeah. And then I, I know there was and, also, and I don't know where it came in in like the timeline or anything, but I, uh, Bill Peabody, um, he did the roadie flat wing, just kind of a simple, right. simple version. And uh, that's boy, that seems like an old fly to me. For whatever reason and I, I don't know whether the like the, the newer multi feather flat wing was before or after um but yeah there's a whole whole lineage there that's really pretty cool yeah and then uh, and then kenny abrams uh was the one who really kind of kind of uh i won't say glorified but he made some beautiful elegant um mixed colored flat wings that uh that are just gorgeous, gorgeous flies. They're, you know, yeah. they rival an Atlantic salmon fly in beauty. And and so we're going to tie one not quite as complicated as uh, as Abrams did, but a little bit, a little bit more yeah. complicated than a simple flat wing. And, and, and his, book wonder, was, his book was Striper Moon. Is that that right? The one there was kind of there was Striper Moon. And then there was a second one that I have here called A Perfect Fish. Uh, which which talks oh, more about the flies themselves, yeah. And uh, it's uh, his, his it's illustrated with his paintings, uh, oh, but okay. it's a cool book. And there's some beautiful patterns in there. Um, again, they almost look like Atlantic salmon patterns, uh, very classic looking. And there is an advantage to tying. You know, we we normally want to tie a a streamer flies so that the feathers are are like this so that it looks like the flat shape of a bait fish so the feathers are vertical 
but there is an advantage to taking them and turning them flat, a couple advantages. Um, one is that they have better action. They wiggle, they wiggle in a different manner when they're tied in flat, more like uh, the way a bait fish would wiggle. And also they retard the sink rate because of the flat profile. And that's something that, you know, we get, I think we get so hung up on the, the Clouser minnow and, and weighted streamers that we forget about the kind of the neutrally buoyant streamers, which are, uh, can be very, very effective uh, when fish are feeding on bait fish. Bait fish don't, you know, bounce up and down like this, although there's no arguing the effectiveness of a Clouser minnow. Uh, there are times when, when a fly that just ride plain straight and then just sink slowly is um, is even more deadly, particularly during a blitz, I think, where the fish are looking for bait fish that are moving slower and are crippled. Yeah. So a, a stunned bait fish, one that's been a, yeah. Yeah, one that's been hit and is kind of knocked out and just doing that yeah. little glide thing. And uh, yeah. So if you're right. looking for a if you're looking for a way to tie streamers differently with a different profile and a different action, uh, this is a, this is a good, good style to explore. And, and it, it, the flat wing is truly a style. It's, uh, it's not a particular pattern. I, I kind of put it in there now with, uh, in terms of movement with, with uh, game changers and like Bob Popovic's beast fly the you know, the mm -hmm. large articulated patterns, this kind of does, not, not exactly the same thing, but has that, that kind of sinuous side to side motion just, mm -hmm. just based on the feathers and the flat wing of it. So kind of, mm -hmm. kind of that is same, same attractive quality that they're looking for, uh, uh, that the flat wing also produces it. Yeah. So, so you, you, you're tying first. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start. Actually, you know, okay. I, 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 uh, one second, Tom. Can I get? Can no, I jump no, in? No, 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 you no. can't. No, you can't. No, you lost your chance. No. Yeah, oh. yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I just but before because I got to clear these things off. I just had a couple of flat wings laid out here, Ooh. and, and Tom, yeah, Tom, not, I did not tie all these. By the way, uh, this again, this is my oh, buddy good. Joe, That's Joe good Cordero. to hear because they no. look really good. <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> and so, um, like, this is about what Tom and I are going to tie today. About about this size uh, on a smaller hook, though. But the the cool thing about the flat wings, if you can get the these the right sized hackle and, and the right quality hackle, they I mean they go all the way up. This, this very close to a foot long, and you get all this motion, and still the fly weighs practically nothing. There's there's no nothing to hold water, and one false cast shakes all the water loose. So as big of the fly as it is, it, it's just it's a pleasure to cast, and they because they're so light and everything they they do move very very well in the water neutrally buoyant so just wanted to show you the kind of the range and different colors that you can get all and right you're people, up. people who worry about short strikes on these long flies don't because the fish just inhale them In, yeah <laughs> never get short strikes all right so i'm i'm starting uh i am going to use a standard uh uh, pre-sharpened saltwater hook, size two. I was going to do a four. Tim convinced me uh, to do that. He wanted to do a two. And the reason I wanted to do fours actually is because the colors that we're going to use today Im Im imitate very well a uh, small sand eel, which is a common bait fish this time of year on Cape Cod, which is uh, which is where I'm going tomorrow. So I needed some flies for my fill my fly box. I figure, why not make Flagler help me fill my fly box? So I am going to insert my hook in the vise. That's always a good way to start. I highly recommend it. Flagler doesn't, of course, he ties with his fingers. He doesn't. Yeah, do all much. all handheld. Yeah, yeah, all handheld. And. I think I'll move this camera a little bit. I think I'll move the vise. And then I got to refocus. Oh, boy. 
thought I had this all set up. Trouble with this is it's a long a long fly and it's tough to get any close up. Yeah. Tough to get any close up and still show the whole fly. So I'm using a six O white thread. And I'm gonna start my thread. Somewhere up front, doesn't matter at all. So I got my thread started there. And I'm going to wind all the way back to the bend. Right there. And then I'm going to take some white bucktail. And for this fly, I like uh, a bucktail that's uh, fairly uh, fine. And you find the finest bucktail toward the tip of the tail. So I'm going to take a fairly small amount. Actually, let's do this over the black. I'm going to take a fairly small amount and cut it. And the way I deal with bucktail is the first thing I do is look for any really super long fibers that aren't part of the bunch. This bunch doesn't have any. Then I grip it by the tips and remove the short stuff. And you could actually save some of the short stuff if you wanted to for smaller flies. You don't want a big amount of bucktail. Uh, this fly is best tied sparse. So, you know, and if you find that you got too much bucktail, then just come up a little bit higher on the tips and pull again and remove a few more hairs. That looks about right for this size too. And I want this to be this bunch of bucktail. I don't know. I like it to be about tw twice, twice the length of the shank. So I'm going to put it where I want it. And then I'm going to just come in with my scissors and cut it off just behind the eye. And just lay that, lash that on top of the hook shank. Come forward. Gather that all up. And then start putting more pressure on there as you go back. So that you get it all secured in there like so so it sticks straight out and then tim i'll i'll go to the pillow part and then stop how's that okay and then i'm gonna take some uh a, my white saddle hackle Change the exposure a little bit here so you can see that better. And I'm just going to grab some fluff from the base of a feather. Any any old feather on here at all. Just going to find a... Well, let me just pull a big feather out of here. Big feather that I'm not going to use for anything. I could have used the feather that I'm going to use for the wing. And just cut myself off a little bit of fluff. We're just going to make a little pillow that lays in there and helps that wing lay flat. You could use dubbing here if you want to. I think Kenny Abrams originally used dubbing. So I've just got a little, little bunch of fuzz there. Just the down from the bottom of the feather. And then I'm going to dub that little bit of that to my thread and you don't want it too tight you want it kind of soft i've got that on the thread and then i'm just going to wind a little bump right in front of the tail and if a couple stick out just pluck them out of there like so Okay. Hmm. Over to you, Tim. 
Oddly enough, Tom, I do things a little differently. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Ah, oh, dear. No, I can't um, imagine it. So I, I'm the same thing, size two, uh, must. I'm going old school, uh, 34007, kind of really standard saltwater hook. I already have it in my vise. Kind of really important here that it, it be really well secured. There are places in the tying that I like to use just a ton of tying pressure to make things work. And so, you know, sort of long shank, bigger hook, you really want it to stay in your tying vise. Anyway, uh, thread is pretty much the same. Uh, I, I do, I, I'm, as many of you guys know, I'm a UTC guy for most of my thread, but this is uni thread, white uni thread, six aught. And I'm going to go and get it started on my hook shank. I am going to leave some space uh, behind the eye, really just as a reminder, kind of that I, I, I want to keep that area open a little more than a hook gap or sorry, an eye length in length, not a hook gap. And I'm going to wrap rearward, but I'm not going to go all the way back to the start of the bend on this one. I'm just going to take of, nice of tight course, wraps. Of course you aren't. Of course yeah, you I'm, aren't, Tim. I'm going to go. And for me, with flat wings, the way I learned it uh, was it's, everything kind of starts at the hook point. Now, also just a little different on the, the bucktail. Uh, here I have a beautiful bucktail. Uh kind of hard to get but i'm i'm from new jersey and i know a guy and so i but i'm not going to use this one i'm going to save that one and use a, a little kind of more store-bought bucktail and rather than using the stuff up at the tip i actually like down low this shorter stuff and it's a little more hollow down at its base which i like because i want it to flare a bit with these flat wings i'm just going to strip i again don't like tom said don't need much of it at all i'm going to strip out anything that's overly long uh and really anything that's overly short so with this i'm going to go up and i want it to be i i don't know uh, about a full hook and a half in length something like that not not too long and i'm going to take my tying scissors and trim this stuff off at an angle like that what and put it down like that and you you want your tying thread behind that little bottom edge and i'm going to take one wrap two wraps and then pull down really really tight finish that wrap off so it kicks up like that that's kind of the uh, that's what i'm going for here and then i'm going to take my is he making faces joan he's, he's astonished <laughs> And I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to press down. I don't want this stuff pointed down. I want it splayed out. That's why I like the hollow better. I want it splayed out like a little, little broom, just side to side and kind of kicking up. And the idea here is this will be what helps support the flat wing uh, and keep it flat. So that's looking okay. And I'm going to keep on moving on to the pillow part, if that's okay with you, Tom. Is he sure, just stunned? Is he, is he... <laughs> I think we lost Tom, Joan. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just shaking my head. You can't see me. Just, just... Anyway, so a little different here. I, I'm at this is not really necessary because we're 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 just tying really kind of a single wing flat wing here, but for multi-wing flat wings, it, you want a little more support. And what I'm going to use is a feather from, I know this is hard to see because it's the same color as my background, but it's from a Whiting Farms bugger pack. It, it's like using a, 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 a hackle from a cape, uh, good and stiff and, and, and nice and straight. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back up and I'm going, going to go just a little bit longer than that bucktail. Just kind of snip and strip this lower stuff off. I do want some tie-in. And this is going to be the first part of the, like, flat wing support. And you can see it's concave side up. 
kind of kicking up like that. And this, I mean, this is the first critical part to keeping it flat. So I want to make sure that's absolutely flat and that the stem runs down the, the center of the shank, just about like that. And that's not what I want to happen. Points off for that one, Tim. Sorry, guys. Real important that the, you get don't this you part people, right. Don't you people forget that. Yeah. When it comes time to vote. Absolutely. But, you know, this is one of those things that you want to get right. Kind of key to the key to the fly. I have no idea why that slipped. And it's still doing it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, just, yeah, just leave it. No, just, we're not right. going to leave. Just leave it. We are not going to just leave it, Tom. <laughs> and see if it were me, I would probably put some super glue on there just to make sure that that didn't go anywhere. But that's kind of not the traditional way. Oh, to do it, of, so. co of course. Yeah. You, you so need I'm, super glue. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do it, though. Anyway, you know, those, nice who, those who can't tie it right use a lot of super glue. <laughs> So nice and flat on there. Now, the cool part. Why don't you just glue everything to the hook and forget about Did, the thread, I, Tim? I, I didn't glue anything. I'm going to switch over to, I, I think this is a new product from these guys. For, it's actual, they call it flat wing saddles. And, and mm. they're beautiful, beautiful, long. Uh, I mean, some of these guys are just crazy long feathers and lots of web lots of side to side movement like you're you're after and uh i i pluck one from down lower because this is actually a fairly short flat wing and i don't know whether you can see it but it does it has that beautiful side to side motion and what i'm going to do here just again just a little different than tom is i'm going to go in and find where the stem really starts to thin down <clears throat> and i'm going to snip there Okay, then I'm, I hope you can see that. Then I'm going to work my fingers back and just pluck off the fluff like this. Okay, I'm going to save that, that piece of feather definitely. So, yep, back to two. And zoom out. And I'm just going to take that and do kind of like a little dubbing noodle on my tying thread. Bring it straight up and then press straight down and just believe it or not one wrap that's it to make the pillow and i'm going to leave it like that you're up tom you're gonna, are you, are you're you gonna stop there you're gonna <laughs> stop there i i'm gonna stop there okay all right so you know sometimes tim introduces a um material that wasn't on the list and i'm gonna do that i, I knew you were i saw I'm it earlier on I gotta, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go do ahead it. i'm gonna I didn't see, i'm gonna use i didn't see I'm grizzly use, listed anywhere yeah well the, the original reason was i couldn't find any olive good olive saddle hackles um and that happens and, and as tim so rightly uh, suggests uh, you need to have the right hackles for this. And I didn't have the color olive I wanted because I'm trying to imitate a sand deal. But then I thought, well, two things happened. One is I found this kind of a chartreuse-y uh, grizzly cape, which has some, some nice feathers for the base. And, and then I found some old olive saddle hackles that were, oh, they were probably 30 years old because they were they were in an Orvis bag and they were marked a dollar fifty. So they had to be <laughs> wow. really old. And and I found the feathers, but they were all jammed into the bag and they were all curled and everything. So I I took some downstairs and steamed them and found some nice feathers. So I'm gonna combine a white, the grizzly, and this olive to get uh, almost a perfect shade of a sand eel. 
or like a sand so, mackerel. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these uh, neck hackles. And I'm going to make this longer than the bucktail, probably about, it's about three shank lengths long. And you can't see it there and I can't back up enough, but I will toward the end. And I'm just going to, it's going to be longer, longer than the bucktail by about, I don't know, 20%. No, actually, I'm going to make it just as long as the bucktail. Never mind, because this is the supporting feather. So I'm going to make it as long as the bucktail. And I'm just going to hold it there on top and take two turns and just leave it. Then I'm going to snip it up front. So that's flat. That that feather is tied in flat, and that pillow helps me keep it there. Then I'm going to take a nice white, long, flexible saddle hackle, and I'm going to find one that's a little bit longer than what I need, so that I can get the long the long feather, but still be tying in. Uh, a stem that's fairly thick. And I think this one looks good here. Doesn't have to be exact. And then, oh, by the way, that grizzly feather is cupped up. So the dull side is, is curving up like that. That's going to kind of hold that other hackle in place. And then I'm going to take this white hackle and this, this is going to be dull side down so it's going to be cupped against that grizzly hackle and i'm just going to place that there and then get my scissors and cut this one off the same place tie it in and push down on top of that feather when you apply some pressure so that the feather doesn't roll we don't want to have a flagler happen here <laughs> and then I'm going to take, then I'm going to take that olive feather and again, dull side down. So it's cupped, cupped down. And I'm going to place that olive feather on top. So I've got like a sandwich of feathers here. And so now I've got a nice flat profile long and skinny back there and then i will come in cut that off and it's probably a good idea at this point to just trim some of the fuzz but i don't strip my hackle stems because i want i want these hackles to be tied in all the way down the length of the shank. I don't want any chance of these pulling out uh, when I'm in the middle of fishing. So it looks it looks like hell now, but bear with me. I'm going to wind forward. Might get rid of that. And wind forward all the way up to within an eye length. I don't want to bump here in front of the eye. So we've got a little fuzz there that you can pluck out. Should I stop there? Yeah, I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to trim. I'm just going to trim a few of these things here. We'll get, we're going to get rid of those later. So that was, that was a perfect place for me to drop my bobbin on the counter like he snipped his thread, but darn it. Oh. So I think I'll, I think I'll I think I'll leave it there. <laughs> that would have been a classic. Um, anyway, okay. Um, so back to uh, this was the feather that I had I had pulled the fluff off of, and I, I'm just going to use this one, um, kind of the same thing. But 
I've already I've already tied in the upturned feather, the feather that kicks everything up. So this one is going to be I'm going to tie it in with the dull side down, and it's going to be just a bit longer than that uh, that feather that kicks it up. And again, this is this is real traditional, probably not the way I'd actually prefer to tie these, but um, I'm 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 going the the way I learned and got to be real careful here, but only just laying the thread across the top. One, one wrap, not not two wraps, not not three, um, just one. And so I have uh, again the uh from from hairline one of these pastels and, and a lot of the colors for flat wings are are kind of pastel they're, they're not especially bright and, and blues and pinks and olives uh and to me there's a gorgeous color olive so i i pulled a feather from that uh, and it's it's right here i am going to measure on this one i want to go just a little bit little bit longer not much longer than the uh than the previous feather, just just a little teeny bit, and so I'm gonna go and kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna snip off where it gets real thick there, and sort of like Tom did, I'm gonna keep some of that fluff on there. A lot of the flat wings that I've seen have that fluff. You can actually see it sticking out of the side, and just go over the top. And again, one wrap and just keep that whole thing flat. And I think the fluff is there is because you really want to tie in the feather where the stem starts to thicken. And it always starts to thicken right where the fluff starts. Yeah. And right. also, if you, if you think about it, too, I was going to mention it when you were tying it in, Tom, by, by having those, those, whether it's fluff or hackle fibers, tie you're tying around them that also helps to keep that feather flat you yeah know, that keeps that them adds braced a, yeah yeah exactly yeah. it's not just a bare stem that's that's spinning right. around a hook shank so right. um yeah there's a lot lot of reason for it there's a question here uh from craig are these feathers the same that you would use for a traditional stevens or oatman feather wing and craig the answer is no uh those those streamers would use a much wider uh saddle hackle and here we're using uh, a very narrow saddle hackle because we're looking for that side to side motion. And so um, they have better action than a traditional Stevens or Oatman streamer. Sorry, I just wanted to, I just wanted to answer that question, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Are you and you would agree, I assume, right? Yes. I don't care if you agree, but just checking. <laughs> of course not. Why should you? Why would you? Um, I never agree with you anyway. <laughs> I think you're up there, sir. Oh, really? You're you're gonna stop there, huh? Well, I I could keep going. I I have one more little step. That's about it. Yeah, I... go ahead. Do your do your All other right. little step. My other little step is the. Uh, you can use whatever you want here on the body, um, but traditional favorite is Bill's body braid in silver. Uh, Bill's another New England guy. And uh, so go with tradition. I'm just going to take. Hey, it's blue painter's tape. I don't know where I learned that from. I don't know. I don't know. Boy, you've just turned into a painter's tape fanatic after you watch <laughs> me use it. You're just, so, you're just trying to be like me. Uh, always, Tom. Always. <laughs> and again, if, if you I, only knew the the tricks that I learned from you <laughs> <laughs> from watching your videos, <laughs> I am just believe it or not, I'm just going to take a, a single wrap, pull it forward, and then I am going to grab. I'm going to hold on real tight right here, and start making wraps and wrap that whole big nasty mess and i'm really gonna start to wrap hard here but squeezing real hard and to me this is what that it's just a key little step right there 
is I had all those single wraps around there and wrapping rearward just absolutely locks everything in place. It Now it's not moving. And I too, I, if I have some stuff that's real wonky, I'm going to trim it off. But I kind of like those little fibers coming out of the back. A lot of traditional um, hair wings seem to have that. Flat wings, not hair wings. And just to finish up, because this is an easy little step here. Again, this, this wrap is going to be real tight, again, just to lock everything in place. Touching wraps forward. This... It, this Julia, can you switch the screen? Oh, yeah. I'm staring at myself here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So I'm going to go all the way up to that point with the body braid and just end there. Now, th this, it's kind of got a weird taper to it, yes, but th most of this is going to get covered up at the end, and you just want that that little bit of shimmer to, to come shining through. So that's kind of what it's looking like right now. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So. Uh oh. Switch. Here, there. Okay. So um, looks like we're doing things differently. Cause I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my flash in now and I'm just going to take, yeah. And there's a reason for my, there's a method to my madness. I am going to take uh, two strands only of silver flashable, just two. You could even use one. And I do, and I do sometimes if I'm tying a size six, uh, I tied some small ones, some size sixes. I used a single strand of flash, but I don't, don't like a lot of flash in my, in my bait fish. So I've got two strands of flash abu here. Can't see it, but I'll come to the other camera. And I didn't lose one. Oh, I just dropped one on the floor. Oh, no, it's still in my hand. All right. So I'm going to wet the flash abu just to doesn't go anywhere and I'm going to fold it around my thread around the middle like so and then I'm going to bring it up on top and wind back pulling it a little bit toward me right over to on top of the wing and I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer than my wing or just even with the wing. Um, the reason I tie in my flash here and not further forward is because the flash sometimes tends to foul around the bend. And by tying it on top of this flat wing, it's a lot less likely to foul. And then... Interesting theory. Yeah. Then I'm going to go forward. And I don't like that lump. I don't like that lump in the body. So I am going to, I'm going to cover my body with thread and try to get a fairly decent, not a taper, but just so that it's, I don't have a lump. Because I don't like lumpy bodies. And then I am going to use uh opalescent tinsel or mirage tinsel i'm going to grab myself about six or seven inches of that cut it off and very non-new england by the way very i know very non-new england so is bill's body break you're rooting and for the I'm warriors gonna, aren't you i'm gonna i'm gonna tie it in I'm going to tie it in with three tight turns and I'm just going to leave that longer, that longer strand sticking out there and I'll take my first turn a little loose and then I'll start tightening. And this is really hard leaning over the camera doing. And I'm just going to make touching wraps. If I get a little gap there, it doesn't matter because I'm going to come back 
over and I can cover that up. And this tinsel te seems to take on the color of whatever wing is above it. So, it, you know, it's reflective. And then you kind of angle back in the other direction. And that's going to cover up any gaps that you have in there. Not that you're going to see much of this, but it just looks neater than that lumpy body that Flagler did. And then I always like to tie the last turn underneath underneath the hook. And one of the reasons I don't want to bump here is I don't like a wing that, that sits up. I like a wing that really hugs the body. And so I'm doing everything I can to keep that wing hugging the body. I don't want that piece of fuzzy there. Clip these off. And then I'm going to wind all the way to the eye and then back, making sure I cover that tinsel and come back just a turn or two over that tinsel body. All right, Tim. All right. Your turn, look, to show, look, your turn to show look. them a different way of doing it. <laughs> You're looking good there, Tom. I'm impressed. Are you worried? I, I'm I'm a little worried. I'm always a little worried. You, you should you should be. Let me make sure. You know, I haven't had a win in a while. I know you <laughs> No, I don't, my, I, don't if, I don't know if my I don't know if my I don't know if my ego can handle it. You know, um, um, every time I finish, Robin says, "Did you win?" No. And then and then I'm depressed for a week, and you know I won't talk to anybody. And oh dear, you're going to the Cape. It'll all it'll all wash away. Roger Bird, that was two strands to make four, but you could easily do it with one strand on a smaller, on a smaller one. I gotta switch this. To, I'm tired of watching that focus go in and out. There we go. All right. So here I'm using the the longer bucktail that I got from a guy, and just nice long straight fibers. One of the things though that I, with flat wings, to to me anyway, it is almost impossible to be too sparse it, it it's just so easy to overload these things particularly with the bucktail and it it just it kind of ruins them and <clears throat> the the ones that not not ones necessarily that i've tied but the ones that, that i like the most are really the most sparse where you can almost count individual uh hairs of bucktail so real sparse clump I'm going to go and I'm going to tie this one. I should probably go this way. That's the way my thread is. I'm going to tie this in, and this is going to be the under underside of the fly. And so I'm going back about as long as the, the hair on the brush, maybe a little bit longer uh, than that, that flared hair. And again, I'm going to do the same tie-in technique as I did at the back, little angle to my cut. Lay it there, make sure I get behind that corner, and then drive that thread down. And I, I know what Tom's saying, that you, you really don't want this stuff kicked up like that. And, and he's right, but I, I then take my thumb, and I'm going to work the bucktail around to both, up both sides. Okay? So in the end, it kind of flattens it out like that and I, I know this is a little uneven here you can take care of that mostly later one of the ways that i found i like to do it is i'll go in with just the hook and that way you're you're pulling from way up front so you kind of get the ones on either side that should be on either side about like that you get them evenly split around the the bend of the hook in theory Okay, so that's just going to be the underside, and I'm going to end with my tying thread right, right there at the uh, at the back edge of those wraps. 
should I keep going or you want to go? What What do you want to do? Yeah, why don't Why don't you finish your Why don't you at least put the rest of your bucktail in? Oh, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll do that pretty quick because it's all the same thing, really. Uh, I'm running out of the good yellow stuff here. Uh, you can see, and I'm getting down to where it's a little hollow. I don't want to take any from up there because I'm liable to get some brown bucktail in. But there's, I, I'm going to use so little of this stuff. It, probably doesn't matter just just an absolute hint of the yellow this stuff is is wicked bright so i, I just don't need all that much of it a couple that are extra long very hard for me there we go so just just super super scant and I'm going to tie this just ever so, so slightly longer than the white bucktail underneath. Just, just a little bit, but same exact technique. A few turns and then work it down either side. Oh, that's good on the other side already. And then end with my my uh, thread right back there. I'm going to keep on going to, in order to catch up with Tom. So I am, too, going to use Flashaboo. Only two strands. I'll grab two strands out of here if I can. Got a few more. So two strands. And Tom is absolutely right. Notice how I, notice how organized Flagler is compared to my flash of boot. <laughs> <laughs> I just like leaving it in the packet. I'm gonna find about the <laughs> about the midpoint of those strands right there. And then I do it a little little differently than Tom, oddly enough. I'm gonna lay strands on top, take two wraps, pull them back, and my theory on the flash is I, I too, I don't like a lot of flash on these, but <clears throat> the reason I tie it in here is I have everything beneath it to kind of keep it from getting fouled in the, in the bend of the hook. And I understand what Tom was saying because I hate when that happens, but the, also the way I look at it, if a, a, a bait fish is going to have a flashy lateral line, it's going to run the whole length of its body. It's not going to start right at the tail. That's it in theory anyway. And so it would start at the head and go all the way back. Anyway, last little thing real quick is olive bucktail. This is a beauty. The, the hair's a little, little kinkier than I like it, but I really like the color. I heard you like kinky anyways. <laughs> yes. Do I, hear, do I hear Joan giggling in the background? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was you got, you got a chuckle out of her um, <laughs> anyway super super sparse maybe just a little bit more than the yellow and here i'm gonna just just a teeny bit longer back there but that same exact tie-in method i do want to be all the way back there but so i catch that that bottom corner Just a little thumbnail to spread it out and, and keep it flat. And then I'm I'm gonna just start working on the, the head of the fly here. Not this is not finished, but end with it right back at the back of the wraps. So I got a little yellow poking out, a little bit of that flash underneath. Same on both sides. Um, looking pretty good. You're up, sir. It is looking good. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, not much, uh, not much similar or not much different from Tim that I am going to, I am going to use some sparse bucktail for the throat and 
I'm going to make it sparser before I cut it so I don't waste any. Cut it. Clean it. Get rid of the no long hairs in this one. And then I, I like my, and I'm, gonna, I'm also going to turn my vise uh, upside down, rotate it. Um, I like my throat to go just past the bend. Uh, there's two, uh, two purposes. This forms the belly of the fly, and it also does help a bit uh, keeping the fly from fouling. And I'm going to hold that in place. I got it where I want it. I don't cut my bucktail on an angle. Um, I worry that if I cut it on an angle, those hairs that are closest to the thread are so short that they're not going to be bound under very much. So I don't, I don't cut it in an angle because I want maximum wraps over all those hairs, not just some of them. So I'm going to come back and like Tim, um, I didn't, I didn't mention it there, but like Tim, I, I take my first two wraps of uh, on the bucktail, uh, fairly loose. And then I really start bearing down on it because you don't want it to flare. Now I'm going to take my yellow bucktail. And again, I like the stuff for this fly. I like the stuff towards the tip. I like the finer stuff. And I'm, again, like Tim. I hate to say I'm doing it like Tim. I'm doing it <laughs> it like just Tim. it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, you want the sparse. So, uh, and there isn't a lot of yellow in a sand deal, but it does have kind of a kind of an undertone of yellow in it, some of them. And by the way, if you have any bucktail, that is curved sometimes you get it where it's curved in one direction and you want it straight all you need to do is uh, grab it between your fingers and just roll it like this and that will straighten out all those hairs this wasn't curved but i do have i do have some bucktail that has kind of a curl to it and just by rolling it in your hand you can get it to to all line up that, that's called the colorado roll tom is it Yes. <laughs> and I am going to make this like Tim. I'm going to make this a little bit longer than my throat. Get it where I want it. Bring the scissors in. Cut it off. It's where sharp scissors come in handy, kids. I'm not going to taper it because, again, I want all that bucktail to have equal amount of pressure on it. And I'm going to go all the way to the eye because if I don't, I'm going to create a, you know, a bump there and things are going to roll on me. And then I'm going to take my olive bucktail and do the same thing. Just and like Tim. See, this bucktail's got a little bit of a curl to it. Like Tim, I hate to say it, but like Tim. I'm going to use a sparse amount. And you can see this, that's hard to tell. This bucktail does have a little bit of a curl to it. So I'm just going to roll, well, I should clean it first. I'm going to clean it first and then just use the Colorado roll. <laughs> I can hand roll bucktail <laughs> with one hand. I'm going to even pull some more of that out because I want it again. I want it sparse. And then I'm going to make this and I hate to say it like Tim, just a little bit longer than the yellow to get a little bit of a taper there. Oh, I left my scissors away on the other side of the desk. <clears throat> Whoops. Oh, you were waiting for me to cut my thread. <laughs> that was so close. 
Well, I'm leading so far over the camera here, it's tough to get to the stuff. And again, I'm going to go all the way to the eye and back so that I don't have a... All right. Want to inspect it maybe to make sure things are lined up properly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, Timmy. Okay, Tommy. You're up. Okay, here we go. Let me get cameras turned on. Kind of overheating there. Um, all right, next Next is the, really the only thing left to do is uh, is topping. It's Joan's first day on the switcher, so. And eyes. Oh, yeah, and okay. eyes. Yes. Well, are you? Okay. We'll get to the eyes. Anyway, in terms of the peacock, I am kind of nuts about this, and I got this stuff years ago, and it's super, super long and very, very thin. The little flues on it are just teeny. I was told that seven strands, and I was told this because striped bass tend to have seven stripes, so your flat wings ha have to have seven strands. I hate oh. wasting these big, long ones on oh, this short. No. Yeah, that's what I heard. And seven so, strands. Oh. and so they're real, real thin. They're very different than, than you can use regular peacock. Girl. Don't, 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 uh, doesn't have to be like this, but again, I, I hate wasting these big, long ones on such a short fly, but I'm going to do it here anyway. Um, I have a bag of it, but I, I think this bag uh, was like 35 bucks for the bag. So, yeah, use it sparingly. But but you can see, like, the difference here between regular peacock curl uh, and, and this stuff. And it's also much, much thinner. It doesn't have those huge flues coming off of it. But this is the stuff I like. Seven. And... I'm going to go. Do I get points off? Do I get points off if I don't use? No, no. Well, remember, I took sure? I took five wraps to make the butt on that last fly that was non-traditional. And you took three. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I obviously didn't get points off for that. <laughs> um, anyway, I kid. So I'm going to take these, and I like them nice and long, like like back to the tips of the um, the, the hackle, oh. maybe even a, maybe even a little longer. So oh, all the oh, curve oh, over the top, and <sighs> I'm kind of nuts. I want these things to run pretty straight and true all the way down. Oh. Okay. And uh, I used to break these things off, kind of insist on breaking them off, but there's some hazards with that. The slippery peacock curl, if you break it, sometimes you actually pull it through, even if it's you're pulling it under like six or seven thread wraps, but because it's so slippery, it actually pulls under all those wraps. And Why don't you helicopter it? <laughs> And once, <laughs> don't make me laugh. I'm, I'm trying here. I want to see and your so, helicopter, your peacock girl. <laughs> so it just makes that nice thin seven seven strand and seven strand only little little back off the back. That's a little very nice back off the back. Yeah, nice and thin, and uh, looking good. Um, and I'm going to let you go, Tom. Because we probably do the eyes a little differently. Oh, I'm sure we do. I'm sure we do. All right. Uh, what am I? Oh, peacock curl. Okay. So uh, I agree with Tim that thin peacock curl is the way to go uh, for these toppings. And if you buy strung peacock curl, you're not going to get any good stuff. It's just all... It, it's fine for winding bodies, but it's no good for toppings. So if you're going to do this fly, you need to buy yourself some peacock eyes 
And uh, the really thin ones come at the bottom of the eye. And I'm only going to use three. So I'm only going to catch the three line stripers. And I see one of them is kind of, no, it's all right. I'm going to line them up by hand because they don't always come off the eye. Just line them up in my hand like so. And I don't like my topping as long as Tim. I'm just going to make it about as long as the wing, maybe a little bit longer. I don't want it to go all the way back. So just about the length of the wing. Tie it in. And I'm only going to take a few turns here because it doesn't take much to hold peacock curl in. And I'm going to tie in my jungle cock and I want to. Now, Tim and I are using jungle cock because this is kind of a traditional fly and um, it looks beautiful with jungle cock. It's almost like Atlantic salmon fly. You probably don't have uh, you probably don't have jungle cock because it is very hard to obtain. It uh, can be legally sourced because it can be grown in the United States. It's illegal to import it. But um, you, you, can, you can put in, and actually I think they look better with standard prismatic eyes, and that's one I did with prismatic eyes. Um, so if you don't have jungle cock, don't worry about it. But we're going to use the real thing today because it's a, this is a beautiful fly, and we want to dress it up. So I'm going to take this uh, jungle cock cape. And I don't like my eyes very big, so I'm going to come down here to the bottom and pull two nice little eyes. If I can get two at once. And honestly, when I tie these for myself, I just use prismatic eyes, unless I'm going to tie them and give them away to somebody or something. So there's my two eyes. And uh, a little trick that uh, probably a lot of people have seen is that um, to make these more durable and to sit a little bit better, you just put a little drop of glue on the back of the jungle cock eye and you just take your fingers and it dries almost instantly. Uh, sup uh, not super glue, folks, real head cement. Real head cement. And now um, it'll it'll keep those from from splitting when you when you cast it. I'm, tr I'm trying to put the thing back in my glue. Okay, so I'm going to take one eye and. I'm going to strip the fuzz. I'm, strip, I'm stripping the fuzz from the base of the feather. I'll tie in a little bit of fuzz. And I'm going to, you want them to be kind of right in line with the hook shank, like so. And I'm just going to take a couple turns here. Then I'm going to turn my fly over and put one on the other side. Same place, check them, make sure they look symmetrical. Yep. And then I'm going to, and that little bit of uh, head cement will actually help them stick there while you cut the fuzz. And then I'm going to finish my head by finishing, securing that peacock curl. And then building up a head a bit of a bumpy head there. Whoops. Uh -oh. Never mind. <laughs> Oops. And the whip finish.
and some, and I do like UV cure epoxy for the head on this. Don't rely on the glue to hold your bucktail in place. It won't happen. UV cure epoxy will not get down into those thread wraps. You got to secure that bucktail properly with your thread rather than relying on glue. And then turn this a little bit so that that kind of, and then hit it with my light. And I am done. Looks good. Flat wing. That's a pretty fly. They are. I mean, I mean, not just mine, but in general. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, and and uh, underwater, they're they're Whoops. just even, even prettier. Uh oh. What happened here? Uh, go ahead. I just uh, I think my battery ran out. I got to switch batteries. Oh, okay. I I uh, too am going to use. Uh, real jungle cock. You you can. Um, I I mean there there's some pretty decent imitations out now, and you know they they're, they're almost like caricatures, I guess, uh, of jungle cock that, that that really are doable and, and and more durable. And but there is just something about the the look of natural jungle cock um, eyes that I'm going to pull just two kind of matching matching neighbors. I, I leave the whole feather together, and for me, it's a little different. Um, I, I've always used dubbing wax rather than head cement to just kind of pull everything together. If they're split eyes, it temporarily pulls them together, not, not permanently. And so I'll just run both of these over. Actually, the wax to do this with is Overton's, the old green stuff, but I can't find mine at the moment. So we'll, we'll go with the Wopsy. And I like my, it's kind of a weird thing. When I put on jungle cock eyes, I, I, want, I want the fly to look just slightly angry. And so I like just a teeny bit of cant upward. And what I want to do is I, I want to leave that white spot showing, obviously that spot showing. And this is also a way to keep them kind of even on both sides is I, I pick that point right at the tip of the black and just one or two thread wraps to secure it nice and tight there. Then I'll flip it over and pretty much the same thing on this side, just a little bit of angle. Cover up that black. Pull that one down just a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about that angle, but kind of to go with the angle of the bucktail going back. The one problem with this wax is it kind of makes things a little slippery in there to begin with. And uh, kind of easy to move these things around snip off on both sides and then get my thread out to behind the hook eye to kind of brace it and first go up the other thing you can do here this is where that uh the the fly tires wax if i can find it I'll marry you. Uh, this stuff, so your your thread doesn't slip down. The the wax, particularly on on the uh, uni thread, adds a lot of bite to it. So you can really kind of go like that without everything slipping down and and forward. Build up a nice kind of cone shaped head on there, and at the back. And then a nice, nice tight back to front, like six or seven. Turn long whip finish. Slip that 
tying thread off. Now, uh, as many of you know, I, I can't use UV cure resin anymore because I'm sensitized to it. But I I like the just Sally Hansen. And, and one of the reasons, and Tom alluded to it, is you, you really can't rely on the glue to, to hold the bucktail and your feathers in. But the Sally Hansen, anyway, does penetrate those thread wraps a little bit, not 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 totally. And and so actually kind of put a little back on the eyes, on the bucktail, and on the peacock curl. And that, that will sink in. It doesn't make the nicest looking head um, because it sinks in so much, but but it to me it makes for a durable fly anyway. And just let that dry. John, could you I think that? I think we're ready for the spin. Okay. Um, that fan up there, the blue. Julia, are you there? Are we ready? Yeah, let's do the side by side. I'll put the voting in the comments. I'm gonna dry mine as I'm as I'm doing this. Got to do the spin. Yeah, let me move forward here. Reverse. There we go. Mine's kind of caught on my vice. Yeah, those long feathers do kind of tend to. Yeah. In the tinsel, too. It is a pretty fly. Yes, sir. They are. Um, and they catch fish, too. Oh, my goodness. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just something. It's got to be the movement, right? I, I know color and everything yeah. is important, but I, I would yeah. swear to you it's the movement that really makes I it. I think so. Yeah. And don't just use these for stripers, people. Uh, I would experiment with these for trout. Yeah, there, there are a couple great um, trout versions of flat Redfish, rings. sea trout, pike. I mean, you can, and you can tie these as big as you want. You can tie these, you, know, you can tie these really, really large if you can find long enough saddle hackles, and you can tie them okay. down to a six or an eight. Can you have one of the big ones, Joan? Yeah, the, like this guy. Actually, this one. This one's bigger. Don't forget, I, uh, I see some people voting here uh, in the comments. I hope you're also voting on the link because your votes won't get counted unless you uh, go into the link and vote. Yeah, so that's that's the one that we just tied. And that's this is a bigger, longer flat wing that's just huge. To me, this one looks, you know, like a, a herring, oh. ocean herring or a bunker or whatever. Yeah. Or this is more like a silver sides or maybe a small mullet, uh, mama chog, something like that. The other uh, thing, Rick, the link, the, Rick, the link is in the comments that we're up, up above in the comments where it says, I can vote place here. it again. Yeah, I, I put it everywhere. Okay. Uh, one thing I could throw don't out there, guys. It, don't just put it in the comments because we won't be able to measure it. So if you're going to yeah, vote, was, yeah. vote correctly. Tim, uh, somebody, uh, Sterling wants you to show that herring one again. Oh, okay. I gotta zoom like way, way out <laughs> to, just to yeah. to even even get get the feel of it. And uh, where's that other one, John? Can you hear me? So, to me, the the blue gets the um, you know gets the herring vibe going. And then, uh, like Tom's, this has got a little bit of uh, grizzly in it and some purple, more like a small like a tinker mackerel or something like that. And cool fly. I did not tie these. These. These are Joe Cordero's flies. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, other ones, you know, long, long, uh, almost, almost schlappany like feather in this one. And you can imagine just a ton of movement in it. Yeah. 
Uh, and Douglas, Douglas, I am using a uh, Renzetti Traveler Vice, uh, which I love. It has interchangeable jaws. It has a mid. This is the uh, saltwater streamer jaws, and it has midge jaws and uh, a special game changer shank jaw. So uh, it's pretty nice. Very, very rugged. Uh, really adjustable. It's a great, great, great vice. Okay, are you ready for the winner? No. The people have spoken. Yeah. Okay. I can't take the pressure. Tim. Tim or Tom? Tim. Tom. Tim. Tim. Congratulations, Tim. Yes. Thank you, Julia. Thank I would have voted you. for. I, I would have voted for yours. I would have voted for yours too. I was looking at him. I said, "God, Tim's looks better than mine." So I don't blame people. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I, I appreciate it. Um, that that was that was a fun tie, Tom. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, that's uh, oh yeah. So I did want to mention of... just one quick little thing for you guys out there. If you're tying them, like I, I have a couple fibers down here now that I, I can show them to you. Now that you, you've already voted, um, <laughs> that are sort of, <laughs> that are sort of cattywampus. A cool little trick with this thing is is you take the fly, hold it in like a hackle pliers or whatever, and run it under. Um, I, I up first under hot water, really hot water from your, from your tap as hot as it'll go. And it, it streamlines the whole thing. You put it on a paper towel and let it dry. And it kind of fixes that bucktail more in a swept back, almost teardrop shape. And just, it just kind of, you know, if you were selling the fly or giving it away or giving it to somebody just sort of enhances the look of, of flat wings pretty well. Just an idea. Cool idea. Yeah. Oh, all right, everybody. Well, uh, we went longer than normal. Uh, thank you for hanging in there. Uh, yes, guys. We, thank we, you. We really appreciate it. We love your questions, and those are those are great questions. And um, we will be here uh, in a month or so. We don't know exactly which day because we've got a Fourth of July holiday, and Tim's picking the fly next. So we will. Um, we will see what happens. I won't be tying alone next Monday. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation. I will be tying, I think, the following. Yeah, I'll be tying the following Monday. And I am tying, what am I tying? I'm tying the Eck Caddis, which is a very simple fly. It's one of my own patterns. Um, one of the patterns that's in the, uh, on the, Orvis, in the Orvis offering now. All you need is CDC and a rabbit's foot to tie it. So, wow, it's uh, quite quite easy, but a very effective uh, small caddis fly invitation. All right, everyone, guys, thank, thank you, you very much, in. and uh, thanks for your votes. And I don't blame you. Tim tied a better fly, so uh, you picked <laughs> you picked well, and. Um, we will see you. We will see you next time. Have a great weekend and uh, have a great week, everyone. Yeah, you too. And I've got to remember. Um...